back to Grassroots Media. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Baylington Drug Company TMB Show, where we cover everything on the court with the North Green Huskies and Lady Huskies basketball teams. As always, I'm here with Lady Head Coach James Buchanan and Head to Coach your, Sam Carlton. Uh, original. I've had so many intros this year that I forget which ones you use. Presented by Storm's Barbershop, too. Forgot to put that in the beginning. I need to go by Storm sometime. Roberto. Yeah, you do. Yeah. I do. I'm a little Even overgrown though, right like, now. Like and today. He, today right yeah. I'm about to go see him. He's back from vacation. I'm about to go see he him. He went to Disney World. Did he? Oh, yeah. Well. You ever been? To Disney? Yeah. Did yeah. One of them? Back before they went crazy. <sighs> oh, yeah? Yeah, Disney World went crazy. Did you know that? With what? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, Politics. We want some. Mm. What's that word mean? What's woke mean? Woke. Yeah. What's that mean? Only That's a good mean. definition. I'm the I'm the least political. That's what here. happened this morning. morning to me. This morning I woke up. I did too. We all did. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully. Hey, we we Thank been praise woke, God. We've been woken up early. We got busted. Yeah, sleep. busted. Oh. Ooh. Right after spring break. How about that? <laughs> but I can't complain because the last time I had bus duty. We were out of school the whole week except for one day, and it was a two-hour delay. So January. Yeah. Yeah. I can't complain about doing a little bus dude. <clears throat> we had to do this whole show without you, coach. It was miserable. It was very we weird. Yeah. yeah Y'all did a show. Odd. We did it in here last week. It was odd. It's hard to feel the talking. You you do the you do the good talking. Are you telling me I carry <laughs> no, the show? You carry. I mean, <laughs> well, I'm not gonna tell you up front, but. <laughs> Yeah. Well, boys. it was weird when we start the show because you're always the first one to say something. So whenever we started, we kind of we didn't, here like, we didn't even know our place. Like, what are we? What I'm sorry. Are you doing? <laughs> Where was I? What day did you do it? Uh, I can't remember. Monday? No. Was it the day right you left? Monday. Yeah. You left Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. I had to mow my yard Monday. My yard was high. Is that the first time you mowed it this year? First time this year. I think yesterday was the everything. first official day of spring. Right. Yeah, so. spring is in the air. Fifty degrees. How about that? Yeah, the low was twenty-seven when I woke up yesterday. Mm-hmm. That's winter time, but it's almost Easter. It is. We'll put a plug in for church. We've got a sunrise service at seven a.m. on Easter Sunday morning, followed by a gigantic breakfast. You need to be there for that. Sometimes they make chocolate gravy. You ever had mm, chocolate? Never gravy? had chocolate gravy. I can't help. I just eat the regular gravy. And I can't bring myself to, I'm sure it's good, but a lot of people brag on it. Then we have normal service, Sunday morning, Easter egg hunt after it's over with, big day. Big day coming up, Easter. Greatest day of the year. You do the hiding or the hunting? Neither. I'm too old, I, I got out of that. We have a youth pastor and his family, and they take care of all He's that. up there carrying the service. <laughs> He's carrying our show. Not whole. He's carrying it all. No, I just... I get to make the announcements, take the prayer requests. He does it all. I'm the DJ. I'm <laughs> the church, what is that, an MC? Yeah. Yeah. I just stand up there and write stuff down. What would be your DJ name if you had to give yourself one? He plays the drums, too. DJ Those? Jazzy James. Remember DJ that's Jazzy a, James? That's, that's a good. sick name. I can play the drums. Did you know that? Mm-mm. He there's just a, told me I didn't know too. Like a a if you go on our church Facebook page, we, actually, it's not a very good experience. You, if you heard like the preaching part, that's fine. But our sound system is hooked into our camera, so only the things that run through our system come through, okay. which is like the vocals and the drums. <laughs> All those other instruments, you don't even hear them. If you, if you just watched our service... You would think there's just a dude drumming and people singing. <laughs> it, it sounds terrible. We're gonna get it fixed eventually, but it's a process. You gotta it's trust. It's a process. It. Coach is good. He, oh, he's excited it. up there sometimes. I get to go. I like I like playing. My brother used to play when I was a little kid, and my family traveled around and sung a little bit in all these churches, little gospel music band, Buchanan family. And uh, when I got to be like five years old. They thought, well, what can this young idiot do? Well, he can probably beat on stuff. So they took the drumming job from my brother <laughs> and gave it to me. And I, I still don't think he's recovered from that. They, they tried to teach him. He can play a little bit on like a piano, mm-hmm. keyboard. So uh, he did that. My mom played an accordion. Do you even know what that is? I, do. I know the word. Accordion. I know the instrument. Like a squeeze box. Okay. She can't play it no more. She broke her wrist. And, Sad times. Dad would play a flat top guitar. My sister played a bass. 
I've got, we've got an album. I'm like three in, in the picture. Wait, I'll bring three it years old? Three years old, yeah. You got a copy? I've got that. I got. I think we got extras somewhere. They they do good. They're good. You got a copy of the album? I've heard it in person. So maybe My sister moved okay. away. She's married and moved down in the Maribel area, down in Wallen, and uh, we don't we don't get together and do it much anymore. Of course, Dad passed away back in May, but he'd gotten to where he messed up his fingers, had arthritis real bad, and he he couldn't play. So uh, they're all good. It was a long, Sounds long like time ago. They, they're good. They're really good. Sounds uh, like a talented I mean, guy. James gets his showmanship from his, from his mom. She's, oh, yeah? She's a good... Hey, mom she's gets good. excited. She plays the organ now yeah. at church. Impressive. She loves it. I don't understand this. She likes the organ. Can't stand playing the piano. Really? But to me, it's the same thing. Yeah. But uh, apparently, there's some major differences. She hates one and loves the other. Is there any difference in playing? You're talking to an idiot here. I, don't, <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know. Do you know if there's a difference in playing? You're looking at about the <laughs> zero most. I don't know anything about the instruments. Uh, gifted person ever. I like good music. I like listening to it. His daughter can sing really good. You like listening to it. You just don't know anything about like what goes into it. I'm the same way. Well, I can tell you. If I can play a radio. Hey, I can sit back there in the pew and I can tell you if they're good or bad. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people could do that. Yep, Grace does a good job. Mercy can sing good. She just won't. She don't. She don't like it. Grace enjoys it. Mm-hmm. She's getting better all the time. People tell me all the time they'd rather hear her than me, and they think they're insulting me, but I agree with them. I like hearing her better than hearing me. They're a good team. Seems like a good coaching team too. Hey, first year you went to 20, state tournament together. What, what did we win? Twenty six games. Twenty six and eleven. State tournament. The dynamic duo. I wonder if Mercy will help me when she graduates. That's something I joked about <laughs> with you. I think. <laughs> yeah, we we rolling around over there. I think it's something I joked about two weeks ago. You can't ever get rid of Grace five in a row, and she's been a part of every team. As soon as she leaves, yeah, you... we better not do that. Mm-mm. Just keep her coming back. And you know what Ted Haley did? Ted, you don't have Facebook, I don't <laughs> think, and you probably will never see this, or YouTube. He might, he might see it on YouTube. I'm good. Toward the end of the year, Ted starts going with us to all of our tournament games. And it was great to hang out with him again. And uh, we're traveling to Happy Valley. We're going to Cosby. We go up to West Ridge. He went with us to Substate, down at Midway, traveled with us to the state tournament. So it was great to hang out with him. We had a good two or three week run there with Ted. And he gets his billfold out and pulls out this piece of paper that he has folded up in his billfold that told the win-loss record of all the years that he helped me coach, and he's like giving it to Grace. Like, you still gotta win two more games. <laughs> I mean, he's comparing himself with, he's a 78 year old man. Hey, he's competing. Throwing buddy. shade on Grace. Who's 60 helping. years of age between both Yeah, of them. he said, you gotta win two more to match what I did. And she had the greatest comeback. It made me so proud, it's almost something like I would say. She said, but, but Ted, those teams that you were coaching, <laughs> I was playing on. <laughs> so she tried to take credit for both. Pretty good little comeback. Well, we had a good season, Tyler. I hate it's the season finale. We're going to miss you when you come do those cafeteria shows with our softball. Why ain't you on the diamond down there with them? We could, but it's a lot of going back and forth. you got to probably have a long extension cord. I've seen cord. some kind of, like you know, we did. Let you, uh, did you walk the baseline and ask questions? We did 90 feet last year like we did the uh, – 94 feet in here, 94 but it was uh, 84 in here. I was about to say it's 84. Yeah. You corrected me as soon as we walked out there last year. We need to do those good start next year. We just didn't this year. Next year. Maybe next year. Maybe I next think, year. I uh, think by making the state tournament in both boys and girls, you've been auto renewed for next year. So we'll be coming back season we'll four. Once. Season we'll four. Win, I think we'll win the coaching show of the year. Somebody else going to get that this year. Well, you can't tell us, Rube. I was about to say, you're ruining the element surprise. Yeah. Okay. I wonder if I here's somebody the, else gets it. Here's the greater question. Will we show up at the awards <laughs> ceremony? I think if you win a three-peat, you have to. But by saying that, if we don't somebody get else it, wins if we, it. If we don't get it, you think, what if we just boycott it? Y'all might go under. I was about to say, do you, want to, <laughs> do you want to give up your nomination spot and see how it goes? It would be sad if the one year we go to the ceremony, we, we lost. Because <laughs> we, we've won it two years in a row. Yeah. Because this is year three. Well, I don't know. 
I had coaches text me, I love your show this week. I mean, I can't believe people watch this. <laughs> they, like, we talked about this last week when we were on here. I'm not going to tell you which coach told me that, but I thought it was kind of funny. In county? No. <laughs> Out of county. We Good talked about this too. last week. This guy helped me. He's a, I got an inside street. When I need to know something about some of these teams I play, you got it. You I, got, I got some help. I can't yeah. reveal my source. I've seen Bart, Bart Lyon. He was watching it. He he texted me one day on Facebook. Bart watches was what, he's, he's, got his own, he's got his own show that might be, it's probably better than ours. That he really? does with, uh, uh, shoot. How did I just forget his name? Shoot. The coach? Yeah, the guy that he. Uh, oh, that fella that hangs out yeah. with him. I can't think of his name. I know yeah. exactly who yeah. you're talking about. I just, how did I? I bet that is a good show. It's, it's, that dude's funny. <laughs> he's hilarious. They've done over 100 episodes. You know who else wow. has a good show? I'm going to put in a plug. Can I do that? Yeah. There's a podcast. What's that? A podcast? Is that what this is? Jeremy Marler. This is sort of a podcast since we have more than... Who is it? Jeremy Marler. Yeah. He yeah. familiar. He does good. They, they do really good. Well, uh, Garrett Ware oh, yeah. and Jerry Collins have a podcast. I think they're actually filming an episode today at our church. I think they're going to start filming it there. We have a little library. So they watch this too. So Do they really? Hey, in. boys. Hey, Jared gets up there and leads the choir. Garrett's up there strumming the strings. He's talented, too. He can play. He, he knows them from that, mm -hmm. which I know him from that, too. I played basketball with Jared oh, yeah. growing up from, like, time we were five. And then Garrett, he was in my class, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. And I used to go over there. He played the drums. Okay. Me and yep. him in the sixth grade band. I was in the sixth grade band. Oh, awesome. <laughs> but I would, we'd go over there and beat on those things. Watch that. Though I, I'm not seen an episode yet because I don't watch anything. <laughs> but uh, if you have a chance, I'm gonna try to start There's watching. Say, it's, it's nice looking. Like when you pull it up, it mm -hmm. looks like real. They say they got. They, it's a good show. Yeah. yeah. I think they talk about all kinds of stuff. They were gonna have me on as a guest, and you know what the show topic was? Wrestling. Nice. <laughs> so they would bring me in as the. Expert. We gotta talk about some wrestling on the second half. Hey, we ain't talked about uh, it in a while. Getting good. It is. We'll leave that to the second half. Okay. But one question. We're talking about basketball since this is a basketball show. We'll get into that in just a second. Thirty minutes in. Have you ever watched an episode of your own show? I have been laying in bed before while my wife is watching it on her phone, and I'll hear my voice. It's like the voice of an angel speaking. No, but uh, that's the only time I've ever seen. It. I've okay. never watched it. You can watch them. I know you don't have Facebook. But we on talked YouTube. about this last week. Yeah, you can watch it on watch YouTube. Watch it on YouTube. Yeah. Why would subscribe. I watch it if I did it? <laughs> yeah, it's a go. different perspective Don't when you're in front of the camera to when you're seeing it. Yeah, I screen. remember when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a different perspective. Okay. I'll Will you ever sometime. break down and get any social media? You, you never say never because I think there are certain professions. I have heard that there are coaches, like at the college level, that are required. Okay. Our principal was required to make like a Twitter account back when it was called Twitter. So I may be just because of that. Someday they may require us as teachers and coaches to have a Twitter account, I guess, to help with communication and announcements and schedule changes and things like that. So I can't say never because they may force me to, but if I have my way about it, absolutely not. I know there is great things that happen. So only if he's required. Hey, I Great was, things. I was spot on. I know, I know James you can. But there's some bad things, too. I don't want to The ever. one that you wouldn't make, I feel like, would be TikTok. I make TikToks. <laughs> you made us famous on TikTok. Did I? You have over 1.4 million views from climbing that net down there in Oneida. I jumped up grabbed a rim. What are you talking about? <laughs> White men can jump. I did a pull up on the net. <laughs> uh, this year was the total... Exact opposite. opposite reaction. Uh, golly, I was mad. You told me. I don't know how you can be mad when you are going to the state tournament. Lord have mercy. We did everything backwards and wrong and messed up. I, then, then it kind of sunk in. Wait a minute. We just won. We're going to the state tournament, so we quit being a jerk. But, yeah, I was pretty tore up. We didn't, we didn't finish that game right. But, yeah, they said I was on something overtime. What's that? Over time, they've got millions of followers there, an outlet that posts basketball highlights from this what the, this the high school and college level. Basketball for these kids, they get on there. They, kids don't watch games anymore. They watch highlights. They just watch clips. 
Did LeBron actually, somebody, Glover said that LeBron liked that picture of me or video. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'll go That's I'll what Glover said. I've seen where he finally did a sit down and one of these, all these podcasts been trying to get him. Finally did one the other day. Really? JJ Reddy. JJ Reddy. Good. LeBron with a JJ. Mm-hmm. Well, that tells you how good JJ is because the king don't just show up for anybody. That's good. He's had some good ones. He's had Steph Curry on there too and I've heard that's hard to get. Did they get JJ on the color commentary? I think there was a game and I think he was a sideline. And yeah, no, not a sideline analyst. Oh, he was yeah. on the panel. I think he took over the ESPN job when Doc Rivers took the Bucks head coach job. That may have been it. He's doing got, more than one. I love Jeff Van Gundy. They fired him. He's very good. Yeah. JJ is. He is good. He's a good basketball insight. But let's talk about the trip down to the Me and my daughter, term. they do TikToks. We, you I, make them? Yeah. She, she hits this button on her phone. It counts down. And then I'm supposed to do these. And we practice a little bit first. She tells me what I'm supposed to do. We've done two or three. She was excited last night. She said, Dad, we've got 8,000 views or something like that. I don't. <laughs> people have to be bored out of their mind to sit there and look at this ignorance. If you're looking at what I did in my living room with my daughter and this dance crap, you can't tell me there's something. There's got to be something better you could be doing with your time. <laughs> Mow your yard. <laughs> Do some laundry. Cook up. Play a board game. What's your favorite board game? I've got one. Uh, I, I got two. Mine's kind of... Mine, I got one. What is yours? I like Candy Land. That was, that was going to be one of my two. That and Snakes I and Ladders. I play all that. Shoots and Ladders. I played Snakes and Ladders. What is that? It's is that some kind of Ouija board? Shoots and no. Ladders? Candy Land's easy. That's why I like it. Yeah. Monopoly, well, least favorite. Connect Four. Does that count? Is that a board game? <laughs> yeah, I bet you. I guess. All right. Checkers. Checkers, yeah, always. Now, it's a classic. What about, now, here, here's another Ted story. Checkers. He plays, like, on online. He, he gets serious <laughs> about this stuff. But he plays by these rules that I've never heard. And I told him, I said, I'll never play in checkers because that's not how you play. He said, if there is a jump, you have to take it. Okay, I so thought this was America. It, it's free, freedom of. If there's a jump, you're forced jumping to. When, yeah, that's what he said. And I said, well, what if you don't see it? He said, you, you have to take it. So, <laughs> what, if, <laughs> what if you don't see it? I said, can your opponent call you out on it and tell you you have to jump that? I mean, I, that to me you kind of mess up a little bit. And I know they're if I got used to it. Mm-hmm. And their strategy, you move here to make them jump you, and then maybe you can double jump in. But I, I like just being able to do whatever you want. But I like checkers and connect four. Monopoly, I've not played it in years. It takes a long time. It takes they, they, got a a new, time. they got a new, I know you saw them kids playing it on their phone. Yeah, Monopoly okay, of course. they're playing. Oh, really? You know what you used to do? The family would gather around, and they'd get out the pieces and the money, and they'd, they'd play, and they'd spend quality time together. Now everybody's in the same room, but nobody's speaking. They're playing Monopoly on the phone with some stranger across the world. I don't like it, Tyler. I don't like it. I don't know if there's anything you can do about it. What about card games? I've got Never my favorite card, card game, games. Rook. Rook. I love Rook. You got a favorite one? I don't play many card games. I don't either. You ever play King in the Corner? Mm-mm. My grandmother and I used to play that a lot, so I liked it. I played poker I before, like Texas Hold'em Paper. I guess that's a card game. But these kids for a while playing Pokemon, does that count as a card game? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yu- Yu-Gi-Oh. That was like what was big when I was in high school. Yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh. Hey, these, these, I don't want to call them weirdos. They're just, <laughs> not, <laughs> what was those magic cards? You remember that? Magic the Gathering, these trading <laughs> cards? That was from my generation. I remember coming to school and be, <laughs> some wizard would zap a dragon or something. I mean, they, they knew all the stuff. All the lingo. Man, Pokemon Go, what a time that was. You had people running around the streets trying to catch these Pokemons that they saw on their phone. My, my nephew got into that <laughs> What a, a crazy while. time that was. We drove him around town. He'd stop right here, stop right here. Dude, I'm in the middle of the road here. <laughs> Went to the beach with a couple guys my junior year. It was their senior year. And a buddy said, hold on, guys. I'm going to walk down the street and I'm going to go play Pokemon Go. He's gone for two hours. We had to call him and see if he's all right. I don't like this world. I like the next one that's coming. That's where I'm more and more the older I get, some of this stuff just seems strange. Like I'm I'm destined for another place. All right, we better talk basketball. Look, talk I even those. got my stat sheet out just in case something came up and I needed to reference my final stats. Perfect. 
it, that's about as basic as it gets, by the way. Let's talk about those trips to the state tournament. Not only did you make one, you made two. What was our last... What had we done last time we had a show? Previewed. We, we won the sub-state? Yes. So the, all we got to talk about the state tournament? Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Take the floor. Well, well. Short trip. Uh, two years in a row now. We have... We lost by 10 last year. We lost by 6 this year. And both those games, our opponent shot about 20 more free throws than us. That is not a knock on the officiating. At the time, it kind of bothered me uh, because it seemed like they got a lot of whistles and we didn't get many. There were a few situations where I thought we were doing the same thing they were doing, so we should have got a whistle, and maybe we didn't. But really, it comes down to style of play. It'll about make you. It'll make you think about changing how you coach, because we were a we were an inside out post oriented team this year. Uh, we're, we're trying to make post entry passes, and uh, we're doing a, we're doing some screening and some cutting and some three point shooting. I don't think you could classify us as a driving team. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had some sets, and we do have a continuity that we run occasionally where we're trying to get kids attacking the basket, but that was just not us overall for the most part. And down there, and I think Sam will tell you the same thing, down there if you just get close to the paint, you're going to hear a whistle one way or the other. And it really sets up better, I think, for teams that are just trying to spread you out and go. And that's who we played. We played a team that's got four people on the perimeter, and and two of them especially could get downhill and uh, just style of play. It, it's made me kind of rethink a few things, but who knows, you may never get down there. So you're kind of juggling this. Do we want to do what's best for us to be as good as we can possibly be, or do we want to kind of build an offense to where you can go down there and maybe get to the free throw line more. Shouldn't be asking that question. Mm-hmm. Uh, it should be from November to March, same whistles, but it's just different down there. Uh, so anyway, uh, that was my that's my take on. Very proud of our kids for getting down there, and I thought we gutted one out. There was a few times they they get the lead up there about 10, 11. Uh, 12, and I'm thinking, oh crap, it's going to end up bad. And we we battle back, knock down some shots. I do believe that that's the most comfortable that we've ever been down there. It was hard to get stops, but offensively I thought we had a good rhythm. We were getting the, the types of shots that we wanted. Kids knocked them down. I think we hit six threes, which is high for us. So uh, I, I do think they were relaxed and comfortable. They, I'm sure they were nervous, but I thought we, we turned it over a few times early. You could tell there were some jitters, but once we kind of got through that, you know, I was very, very proud of him. Haley had a great game down there, had, I think, 18 points. She had a double-double, I believe. Yeah. I think uh, Hannah had a – did Hannah have a double-double? I think Haley had a double-double. I, I think Hannah scored in double figures. I'm not sure yeah. about the, the rebounds. But uh, uh, just very proud of him, and I, I can't say enough good things about him. Our guard play – really improved throughout the course of the year. Uh, and and I, I'll say this, just because she's a senior, and boy, we're tickled to have Mercy and Lauren and Cadence and Ella coming back, three seniors and a junior. So our, our guard play, I think, is just going to get even better. Uh, still got Hannah coming back. So we're excited about last year, but anytime you're doing a season finale show, uh, you know, you probably ain't going to talk much about Haley and Heidi next year. So, you know, I think now's the time to do that. And Heidi, this is so typical Heidi. We, we've talked about Haley all year, the big year she's had, Miss Basketball finalist, you know, all this. I think she'll be an All-State player. All-Conference. All-Conference, all yeah, scored 1,000 points. So, I mean, she's playing in a couple of All-Star games. That you'll be going to with it tomorrow. Well, the FCA All-Star Games at West Ridge. Okay. Uh, East Tennessee against Southwest Virginia kids. And then BCAT. And then the BCAT is on uh, Saturday at Blackman High School. So she's just had a phenomenal year, and I can't say enough good things about her. I think she's going to continue her career 
at the next level and we're working on some stuff right now with her and she's already got an invite to go visit the campus and we're excited for her. But Heidi, I don't know that I've ever had a player that was more proud to wear that jersey than she was. And the very last play of the game, the ball is on the other sideline away from our bench and she's guarding the ball. We, we had been fouling to stop the clock and it got down there. We missed our last shot. There's like five seconds left. So, you know, don't foul. It's over. She would not let it be over. She was on the far side and is in a dead sprint to try to chase the girl down that's got the ball just to foul her and stop that clock so she could wear that jersey for one more minute. She dives and tries her best to foul that kid. I thought, no, oh, we're going to get killed in here. Somebody's going to think she's trying to hurt somebody because she was kind of coming from behind, diving at her. But then when she landed face down, she just starts squalling. And that is so typical of her. I mean, she gave it everything she had all the way to that final horn. Uh, there, just, there ain't no quitting that kid. And just very proud of her. Uh, she started every game she played. She had a couple she had to set out for injury issues. So I think she played 35 games this year, started them all. Just uh, thrilled with her. And also, I don't want to leave off Lisa. She was only with us for one year. Uh, I sent her to the scores table right before the half with like a minute to go, and there was no whistle. Well, then in the third quarter, we're back in good shape as far as foul trouble, and I never got her in. And I feel stupid for that. I never got her in the state tournament game. But uh, I think she was a huge reason why we beat South Green in here, just the defense and the energy that she brought that night. She had some big moments. I hope she enjoyed her experience here. We're definitely going to miss her. What a sweet and selfless child. Just seemed to be tickled to death every day, whether she played or whether she didn't play. Great attitude and great effort. So I love him seniors. We're going to hate to see him go. But it's like I told him when the game was over. As long as I'm here, this door's always open. We love for him to come back, come visit us in the locker room for a game, come here to the office and see me anytime, come hang out at a practice. So that's about all I've got to say about that. Uh, I mean, once you – of course, you're disappointed when you lose, but once you take a step back from it there, um, after a day or two, I'm just proud of what we accomplished. I mean, I've said this a thousand times. It, it wasn't easy for us this year. Uh, we didn't make it. We didn't make it easy. Uh, I think I did that interview with you after the game. There were the pressure. Yeah, 11 and 13 um, around Christmas time. Uh, everything's going wrong to to end up down there in the state tournament. Uh, that's just a testament to the kids sticking it out and uh, being about the right stuff and doing things the right way. And uh, hey, what? Tell us about the. I didn't even know this, but Mercy must have saw a picture on social media where them kids had wrote. Somebody wrote on the bus, "When's it gonna change?" <laughs> and I think that's a reference to maybe a comment that you yeah. made a few times through yeah. the year. Uh, I guess that was last, change. That was last change. year and this year. Yeah, I mean, that's when I'm going over uh, and I'm talking to them in the film about this, you know, all these loose balls and all these toughness plays and all these rebounds and all these we're giving up 70. When's it going to change? And I guess at some point it changed because we, we ended up. Uh, and they wrote that on the bus window. Yeah. I thought that's pretty cool. Yeah, they did. And they got me a shirt they made. When's it gonna, uh, <laughs> I'm always saying that. When's it going to change? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they wrote good, you know. That, that's kind of our, our mantra there. The last half of the year, when things were going bad, <laughs> good. So uh, anyway, they had a good year. Not a good year, a great year. Um, and it's like Coach talked about his seniors, my seniors, and uh, Sam and Jason. Um, I guess it was the only two that played varsity there their first year. But they're the only class that can say uh, since they've been at North Green, they went to state tournament three times. So right. I thought that's a I mean, that speaks for itself. That's an amazing accomplishment. Uh, as far as the game, it, it hurts a little more when you feel like, you know, you play all year and you do all this stuff, and you, when you get down there, you don't ever know what kind of draw you're going to get or who you're going to play. But 
uh, we felt like we had a chance. And we felt like, I mean, I'll just say, I felt like we were the better team. And it kind of didn't shake out, you know, that way we're up 15. And then some things that, you know, we had been doing for parts of the game pretty well, we didn't do well late. Uh, we just didn't, we didn't make enough shots. Um, our free throw shooting, we were four for 13. Uh, I think late in the game, they got two huge offensive rebounds from a guy that I told you that's going to be important to keep him off the glass. He got two putbacks. He finished with six points, but four of them were putbacks in the last two minutes of the game. And then they had a stud, and I told you, I think I said in that, that's almost, and Coach will, he'll know what I'm talking about here. It's like, that's almost the most dangerous place to be when you're playing against somebody that caliber, and they get down, and they say, okay, I'm Forget the play. Bro. I'm putting my head down and I'm going. Because you had already talked to me about how his usage rate is like 85 now. Yeah, well, his usage rate is already high. And then yeah. he, he decided he's putting his head down and going, and that's one of two things that's going to happen. But he's going to do one of two things. He, he He's going to drive in there and make a shot, or he's going to probably get fouled. Mm-hmm. Um, or when you're chasing him with so many people, you know, you got to throw two at him. Sometimes he's going around our double team and making it three, then it becomes hard to rebound. And, you know, um, I guess if you'd have told us at the start of the year that you guys were going to go to the state tournament and with nine seconds you're going to have the ball for a chance to go ahead, I guess you would have took it. But, you know, it just hurts when you're up 15 and you don't close it out. And that's, uh, like I said, i got to put our guys in better positions to score because we just didn't score the second half. Uh, and we got to find a way to make free throws. But, you know, they weren't trying to miss them. So, uh it was a great year. Um, man, we had, I thought a lot of guys grow uh, as far as second half of the year. I, I told you, I thought we had several guys turn into all conference caliber players. I thought Lance had a great second half of the year. I thought after a, just a horrendous start shooting uh, by his standards, Ben kind of turned it around. I think I was counting up today. He had um, from Christmas on, I think he was in double figures eight times. And a lot of those was 15, 16, 17, 19. He had a 30, whatever it was, 36, I think, or however many it was, a bunch. Um, so he played well. Lawson, um, I think he kind of came into his own as a point guard, uh, handled the ball great for us the second half of the year. And then um, <clears throat> Sam had a great second half, and so did Tyler. Um, so, you know, guys growing up, and they're going to be very important next year because, I mean, Jason's going to be gone. Mm-hmm. Sam's going to be gone. Uh, so... You know, I thought that was good to see. And then, uh, I mean, Sam, uh, kind of like Coach said about Heidi, Sam's just North Green. Um, when I think Sam, I just think North Green basketball because he's been here ever since I've been. And I think of him sitting over there in the front row, fidgeting for his phone, knowing the plays before I call him out, uh, doing the, you know, raising the roof when Andy Stevens is dunking it. And then, I mean, you have any starts for – Three years, goes to three state tournaments. He's just a player, somebody you trust. He knows what you're trying to do, and he's going to give us all trying to do it. So Sam's been a great player here for us, and we're going to definitely miss his services. Um, I don't think that's, you know, even though, I mean, you look at his stats sometimes, and they don't just jump off the pack. Mm-hmm. That, that other stuff matters, um, and that, it's not easy to replace uh, because you don't, you don't just find kids every day that, like I said, it means so much to them to wear the jersey, and then you, they understand like really what you're trying to do. And I mean, whether they're scoring or whether they're assisting or whether they're guarding or whether they're real, it, it don't matter what they're doing as long as they're a part of it. So we're gonna miss that out of Sam, uh, Don and Grayson, uh, just the ultimate teammate. I talked about them guys before. Uh, I mean, Don Stansfield's a leader on our team, and he don't play a lot. I don't think you. I mean. There's not a lot of times that happens, but I mean that just speaks to what kind of kid he is. And I, I, I've said over and over, I think he could be. I really do think he could be a coach, because you take away me and maybe a couple other ones. There's nobody that knows what we're trying to do more. Understands, hey, he's going to be here and he's going to be that. Like he helps those guys through that. Um, so I mean, we're going to miss Don and Grayson's. A, I said an energy giver. Every time, every room he walks in, the energy goes up, and that's um, a valuable thing to have. Um, Tamo, I think I was counting up today. I think we've had shoot eleven or twelve of those guys now um, since I've been here. So uh, 
I mean, those guys are, are valuable to our team and valuable to our program, and we hope that they have a good time over here. I think, I mean, he got to experience the state tournament. He got to play several games. I think he averaged over 15 points a game on the JV team, really helped him out. So um, we hope that his experience over here was great. And then – He's killing it in second period PE. Yeah, he's killing yeah. it. I think he, he lost today, but I think he's three Yeah, his team's in first place. And then they've asked me 400 questions about Jason, I mean, this year, <laughs> but – I, I don't know how I answer it. I mean, I think the best way I can put it into words is like as far as the player, there's nothing he hadn't done. Um, I mean, he's a leading scorer in Northeast Tennessee. Green County boys and yeah, girls. All North that. Green all boys that. and girls. He's been, to, he's been to three state tournaments. He's won over 100 games. Um, you can stack his high school career. You can put it up to literally anyone's. I don't care who they are. Anyone's. And it's going to – I mean, it's going to stack up, you know. So – I mean, I think he that's something that he can, you know, walk away from North Area's time here and be proud of, uh, you know. Uh, it may not have ended exactly how we wanted it to end, but, I mean, it don't always go how you want it to go. So, you, I mean, he, he – There may have been some doubt about whether or not he got that shot off in time. There wasn't no doubt about whether or not it was going to go in. Mm -hmm. well, because that's just Jason. Mm -hmm. It has been. Hey, you can look back over the last three years. I mean, that's a crappy way for it to end, but – I mean, he's the best that I've coached as far like since I've been here. And I, I t said this yesterday, and somebody was interviewing me. I, I, I coached thirty more years, and never be lucky enough to coach anybody that good. Um, so, he, like, a lot of da 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 as far as everything he's done as a player. But then I go. A lot of times when you have a player like that, you know, they may be loud or mm -hmm. you know get on other people or be a little bit selfish or be a little bit airy. He's none of that. Um, never talks trash. Well, never. I mean, just as far as how he acts, it's perfect. Coach's dream. He's the hardest worker. Shows up first. Does the most. I've never. I can't remember one time in four years where I've said, "I'll get you here in the second set." You got, hey, Jason, are you going hard today? Or Jason, you won't be here today. I mean, it just goes hard all the time. And I, I think, and I may be overstepping my my bounds here, I probably shouldn't even get involved in this part of the conversation, but I think some people, I've, I've coached a few, I think back to like Mindy, who was a Miss Basketball final, and I, I rode her pretty hard, uh, but she, she liked that. But I've had other players where they're doing so much right that when they when they do make a mistake, you can converse with them and just like, come on, what, did you not see that? Well, it's almost like they're on a level mentally and I'm about to get in trouble and I don't really care. Yeah. But they're on a level mentally and as far as their ability goes, where you're having a mutual conversation with them and there's no need to pull anything out of them by screaming and yelling and hollering. And I think we have some people that get upset, but well, he don't ever yell at Jason. What do you want him to yell at him for? For scoring too much? or and, and Jason, he gets to take all the shots. Well, if you were coaching, would you not design an offense to where your best player got to shoot the majority of the shots? I mean, just some of the things people have said don't make a whole lot of sense. And I, I think people outside this community uh, have a – some of them have the wrong perception about he's earned everything he got. He earned it all. And uh, I think there's been some people a little bit upset, jealous, bitter, whatever you want to call it. But uh, he earned everything he got. That's my opinion. I mean, he's here every day, and I'm here every day. So, like, um, and I, I, if you haven't coached, I don't think you can understand what he's even talking mm -hmm. about. It's like, and that's built up through, I don't know if you look back, I don't know how many games. We probably played almost 200 games. Or not almost two, or 130, 140 games with each other, me and Jason, me and Sam. So, like, when you – a lot of times you can just feel it, or I can just look at them. They'll look back, and they know exactly what I'm going to say. And by the time, you know, these younger kids, I think a lot of times when they first get here, they want that. That's built. It's called trust. Mm -hmm. It's built. So it's like you, you're making – I've heard it, like, explain, like, you're almost making a deposit each day, and – and then eventually you'll get your return. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So, like, I don't know. Um, yeah, that's that. Like Coach said at the best, it's earned. Um, so you don't just give that stuff away. But he's had a, I mean, 
the best career anybody's ever had in North Green. Um, and I done. think uh, I don't think you can even argue that. So uh, we're we're proud of them all. Not not just him. Everybody on the team. I went back through and I, I talked about everybody. Um, so we're excited about next year. Uh, I think we got some guys returning who who can be really really good players. I think they showed that pretty much the second mm -hmm. half of the year. So I hope we can keep this thing rolling. I just looked on TWSAA's website. This hasn't been updated yet with Javon Carter scoring 3,000. With him added, there are only 23 players that have ever scored 3,000 points. He's right behind that mark. So, like you said, when you put his career up against anybody else in the state of Tennessee in high school basketball for as many years as they've kept records and it's been sanctioned, not many players have ever scored more than him. Not just in Greene County and Northeast Tennessee like we've been tracking and talking about this whole entire season, but when you talk about the whole entire state of Tennessee – there may not have been 25 players score more than he did. That's great as a thing, though. That's a remarkable. Way. I mean, we talk about the leading score in this category and that category, but you think of all the all-conference, all-tournament player of the years that he's racked up to, it'd take us two to three minutes just to name everything that he's done. That's one thing I wanted to do is sit here and try to name everything, but my goodness, there might be too much to name. <laughs> That's off. Yeah, he's, he, like I said, what do you say? Mm -hmm. Jason to Jason. Jason to Jason. <laughs> One last time. And then Haley, we talked about that, going to the Miss Basketball. That was awesome to be down there in Murfreesboro yeah. and see her up there on that stage. Only the second time that you've went down there in your coaching tenure here at North Green. Talked about it with you down there. We previewed it on here, I think, twice. But on camera, speak about how great of an experience that was to see her hard work pay off yeah. and see her recognized in the center of the Murphy Center. That was neat. There's 36 kids down there. There's... Uh, you know, you got six classes, uh, so you got three kids from each class. That's 18 girls, 18 boys. So you're one of 18 kids in this entire state that's getting recognized for that honor. And that, that, that says it right there. That's all you got to say. Uh, so she didn't win the award, but she was a finalist. Man, there are so many people that uh, can't even say that. So just thrilled for her, and it is neat. They do it a little different now uh, as far as they have a separate night where that's all you do is the Miss Basketball. They used to give it out after the championship game. Oh, yeah. And sometimes the winner, sometimes the three finalists, none of them were involved in the game, so kind of took away from the celebration of the winning team. So uh, I think that's one reason why they, they've switched it up a little bit. But, yeah, we're just – Tickled for her and curious to see where the future takes her. I guess we'll jump into break. We'll take a short break. Sam's out on the gym floor right now. So we'll be back in just a second. We'll go ahead and plug all our sponsors in one last time. Uh, once again, thank you to Bellington Grove Company, Starnes Barbershop, and the David Crocker Travel Centers. We'll go ahead and run them one last time. We'll be right back here on Grassroots Media. My name is Robert Starnes. I'm a lifelong resident of Northern Greene County, where I currently reside here with my wife and three children. I was a barber in Greenville for the last six years, but I have recently changed locations to my new shop in Bailton. It's at 285 Mortis Hollow Lane, Afton. I'm also a proud supporter of North Green Athletics. Come see me for all of your men and boys grooming needs. Go Huskies. Bailiton Drug Company services the surrounding communities of Bailiton with excellent patient care using a full line pharmacy, over the counter selections, and a convenient drive through. When you visit us, you are treated as a neighbor, not a number. It's not just our slogan, but our culture. We're investing in our patients, local schools, and community. For over five years now, we have established ourselves as an independently family-run pharmacy that isn't driven by corporate goals. We are driven by what is best for your overall health and wellness. We are conveniently located so you don't have to make the drive. Prescription drugs are just the tip of the iceberg. We also offer natural remedies, essential oils, at-home medical needs such as walkers, rollators, bath accessories, as well as wound care products, and coming soon, basic urgent care services. What makes us better than other drug stores out there? When you frequent Bailiff and Drug, you will receive professional courteous and friendly service that goes above and beyond any other pharmacy in the area. Remember, you're a neighbor, not a number. 
pizza, pancakes, or donuts, the Davy Crockett Travel Center in Baileyton has the cure for all your cravings. While you're there, shop our general store for souvenirs, gifts, and sailor accessories. In a hurry, grab a cold drink and a hot dog to go. Check us out on Facebook and come to Baileyton. Welcome, Welcome back. back to Grassroots Media. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Baileyton Drug Company, TMB, b and whatever you want to refer to it as show. Coach Tarleton, not yet in here. No. Just Coach Buchanan and we'll I still. We'll do a little wrestling talk now. We'll talk. Gotta, oh, he's yeah. back. He's back. Here we go. Here we go. No, I, I got to run here just a second, but what do you think about the final boss? I haven't kept up with it in the last few weeks, the but I don't think boss. I've needed to as much because it's kind of set up now. Right? Yeah. What What are your predictions? What do you think is going to happen night one? One of two because things. One night of, one. I can't decide. This is going to go one of two ways. I think we both have the same mindset. Either... Uh, Either oh, I'm gonna tell you how I think it's gonna go. Okay. I think Rollins and Rhodes are gonna get beat on night one by The Rock and Roman Reigns. I how is it gonna end? Uh, is that the one of two interfe- ways? Bloodline interference. Something's gonna happen. They're gonna lose. Seth Rollins is gonna get hurt during that match, and Drew McIntyre is gonna be able to play the whole. I told you you should have focused on me and me alone. And then on night two, Drew McIntyre beats Seth Rollins. We have a new champion on Raw. All right. But then in the main event of night two, when it's Rhodes and Reigns, and now it's bloodline rules, Mm -hmm. anything goes, here's what they're not thinking. Well, they've already thought it. But here's what they're not saying. Yeah, the bloodline may be out there doing their thing, but every person that's been screwed over by the bloodline for the last three years, I think will come out and make sure that Rhodes wins it. And I think that'd be a neat thing, bring Kevin Owens out, maybe even have Drew McIntyre do a spot. Sami Zayn, all these people that had Orton. these. Yeah, I mean, you had all these people that had a chance at the title and none of them were able to win it because of interference and cheating. So uh, even John Cena, I mean, you, yeah, there's so many things they could do on night two. But I think Rhodes walks out with with the belt. Now, the other way that could go... There are so many scenarios, because there's two scenarios that I have that could happen to Now, me. it could be that Rhodes and Rollins wins, and then on, on night two, like it's a, one-on-one. A committee and, that decides this, or what? Uh, they have a room of riders, like staff. They got riders, but then it has to pass through one person. Yep. One person gives final approval on it. Okay. It used to be Vince McMahon. I think now it's Triple H. Yeah. You know Triple H, right? Know that. Could yeah. be that it's The Rock now a little bit, too, because that, that group bought him out, you know. And he's playing into that. He's a part of the the board. board yeah. The board of TKO, which bought, I guess, UFC and They WWE. were, yeah. They owned UFC, and they just bought so WWE. It, it could, it, it's going to be entertaining. But how stupid is it? It's the same weekend as the Final Four. Mm-hmm. But that's awesome at the same time. I guess. But it also interferes. Yeah. Because Unless did you watch like WrestleMania? Me. Coach going to tape it. It Go depends ahead. on who's playing in that Final Four. Hey, or you could just watch it on your TV and have the Final Four games on your laptop. Well, I've got a little setup there in my house where if I sit in the right spot on my couch, I can watch my living room television and then can peek in there and see my bedroom television. <laughs> <laughs> so i got just a pretty good setup. A little bit. <laughs> pretty good setup. Could you see The Rock turning on Roman, not two, and that setup... Yeah. Rock and Roman at WrestleMania. I think 40 whatever years, happens, or it's not going to be an end all. It's going to be something. It's that setting leads something into up. other stuff. I've also heard this. I don't want to spoil too much for you. Okay, who do you expect to win between Drew and Seth? Drew. Okay. Well, I heard a rumor today that Seth is taking time off oh, after yeah. WrestleMania. Yeah, but you've seen this coming. I think he's still hurt. I've heard. I think he has a legitimate injury. I've heard a rumor that you could see a scenario where he comes out during that screws Roman run. Reigns over. No, screws Cody. And the shield, I don't know Dean about Ambrose that. Ambrose comes back. The <laughs> but that can back. set up a feud whenever he does come back. <laughs> Sam has no idea. What we're no, doing. he has no I can idea. Say it, hear two old women talk about kids. Do you know the shield? <laughs> I don't know more about what y'all are talking about. I don't Put know. your fist in there. That's what That's the shield, the shield right there. <laughs> that that would be a neat twist. Here's what would be bad. If we would have done these shows ten years ago, would we have been the shield? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I didn't much like them. But uh, here's what would be bad. If Reigns walks out of there with that belt again, and, and the <laughs> poor guy does not finish that stupid dang story. You know what's crazy, though? 
He might not. I could very well see it happening. Yeah. And if it did, yeah. after what happened last year, I wouldn't be surprised. Listen. It's fun to listen to fan theories. Oh, yeah. Because some of them are actually plausible and make sense. I've heard, too, where... Uh, I don't know if you know this, but... Don't answer, Sam. I might have to take it with me. Ice Cube has a son that is a very huge wrestling fan. And he made this Ice scenario. Ice Cube or T? Ice Cube, yeah. Ice Cube. O'Shea Jackson Jr. <laughs> he thought of a scenario where Roman retains at WrestleMania, and then you go all the way to Survivor Series, War Games, the show that is named after the match that Cody's dad created. Finally gets him there. In Madison Square Garden, where Dusty lifted that belt that it didn't count, and you can finish the story that way. That's good. That you is good. Are, you boys are going to get your own show, own wrestling show. Well, listen, I'm going to have to jet for now. Hey, is that online? For Oh, yeah, we got to talk about that. Oh, our tournament picks? Okay, I'll tell you mine. I don't care. People have probably already seen this by now. We'll drop the link below, but we have another bracket challenge this year. Feel free to join. Only one entry, though, so don't submit multiple. Can Actually, I, you can't can submit multiple. Can I tell your final four, or does it give it away? And, and it will hurt people as far as... Well, when the brackets pick release, against you, whenever the games start tomorrow, you can look and see what people have picked. Okay, so, so I can tell. This will release. Here's Tyler's final four, everybody. UConn, which I think most people have been, Baylor, Houston, and Creighton. So I, I'll give props to the man for not picking chalk. He's got Houston winning the whole thing over Baylor. Now we dig through here and find. The tribal chief. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> All right, here's Coach T. Final four, UConn. Arizona. He picked against his Tar Heels. I can't believe that. Caleb Love gets the ultimate revenge. Uh, Kentucky. Tennessee. UConn over Arizona in one semi. Tennessee over Kentucky in the other semi. National champ. Connecticut. And now to the winning bracket. I mean to my bracket. <laughs> oh no, we're about out of battery. Are we really? Yep. All right, I'm going to go fast. <laughs> I can't find it. You're, you've got like five minutes. You know your final, you know your final four, don't you? All right. Connecticut. I think everybody's high on them. If I've got Arizona. If UConn doesn't make it and somebody doesn't have them, then they're really sitting pretty. I've got Arizona as well. I have Tennessee as well, and I couldn't do it, boys. I couldn't do it. I said this year I'm not picking them guys. They just ain't <laughs> tough enough. You sent me a text the other night. I said if I pick them to go past the second round, punch, punch, him in the punch me in the mouth, and here I've done it. But I've got Duke in the Final Four, and I got Tennessee beating them. State Elite Eight. Who's going to stop that big monster? <laughs> He's huge. All right, so anyway, I got Duke uh, losing to Tennessee. So I got a I got a women's championship game here from about 20 years ago, Connecticut, Tennessee, and I thought if they're ever going to do it, ever, in the history of basketball, they better do it this year. Go Big Orange. So you think you think this year would be the year? Well, Connect ain't coming back. So who else? Do you is think going this carry? team was better than the 2018, 2019 team? We're about I, to find out. I do. I think you think so? I okay. Do. Hey, uh, 2018, 19 right team. I volunteer. Feel like. Got them. Got them in. Schedule's done. We got our schedule made for next year, but that's going to be a reveal for later. You won't see that till October. Yeah. <laughs> Football season will still be going on by the time that happens. You do a great job. I God. appreciate it. Sam, it's been a pleasure. Go. Coach. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. This is it. Always Bye. Bye. Into the third year of the TMB show. Once again, thank you all for watching. Thank you to the sponsors. Star Barbershop, Robert Starnes, Bayleton Drug Company, We're and also the Dave Crockett Travel Center. To back, to back, Coach's Show of the Year. Do they get to vote? I've actually put that in. Vote. So we'll see. Vote for us. If you vote us in, I'll go to the awards ceremony. Bye. Thank you all for watching this week and this year's edition of the Bailton Drug Company, James Buchanan and Sam Tarleton, TMB, b and whatever you want to refer to it as show, presented by Storms Barbershop. Thank you all for watching. We will see you all next year here on Grassroots Media.